3D printing something highly detailed like a miniature, people will typically use a resin-based 3D printer like the Elegoo Mars 3 here. But with just a few minor adjustments, you can actually print some really detailed things with your FDM 3D printers like the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today by comparing some 3D prints that I've run on my resin 3D printer and comparing those directly to 3D prints off of my FDM 3D printer here. And this all basically came about because I saw a post by Dog Jacket over on Reddit of just a crisp and clear looking miniature that they printed on their FDM 3D printer. And I figured, I really need to go about trying this again. I haven't done this in a few years and wanna see if I can go about printing these as detailed as possible, first with the default nozzle of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and then swapping it out for a 0.2 and seeing what the results look like. Now, I don't think it's gonna be really a shocker or a spoiler that our resin 3D printers are gonna print better than our FDM 3D printers. However, some people might not have a resin 3D printer and they only have an FDM 3D printer or they don't wanna deal with resin or the messiness that comes with working with resin 3D printers. I'm gonna be using Prusa Slicer for all of this and their new a tree support option there, or slim supports, I can't remember exactly, organic supports, that's the name of there. And what we're gonna end up doing here is printing these at 0 0.08 millimeter layer height with that standard nozzle. And the default scaled 32 millimeter miniature took two hours and about 30 minutes to print at this 0 0.08 millimeter layer height. And honestly, at just a quick glance, without even removing all the sports, I think it looks pretty good. The next one I ended up printing was that same file with a 75 millimeter scale version of it here. And again, I went off and supported this here in Prusa Slicer and printed it. Unfortunately, ran into some issues with some of the tree supports just breaking off during the printing process. So the back half didn't perfectly print, but we're seeing some really clean looking prints even with the supports still attached, which I'll be removing here in just a minute. Now with your FDM 3D printer, the more you put on your build plate, the longer it's gonna take to print. On the flip side of that, with your resin 3D printers, you can completely maximize the X and Y build volume of that resin 3D printer with as many things as you possibly can. What's gonna really dictate how long it takes to print is how tall the print is. And that's just because of the way that it works by flashing an image over and over and over again, layer by layer, as it's building up that particular print. Now, in this case, I was able to print a full build plate of these miniatures in three hours and 40 minutes, which is obviously significantly faster than what we can do over on the FDM side of things. But again, you're dealing with a little bit of the resin mess, some of the smells that come with this sort of thing, the cleanup that's involved with it, and then we get to deal with the support removal, which is equally fun on both the FDM side as well as the resin side, especially when it comes to these finely detailed things that are just a pain to remove. It's just, uh, even with these easier to remove supports, there's still a very manual, painful process of going through and trying to break these free without breaking your print off. Whereas with the resin prints, you can, in some cases, depending on how well they're supported, you can just more or less pull the supports away and they start breaking off. But again, makes a mess regardless and is gonna be a little bit time consuming either way you decide to print these things. And here's a look at our cleaned up FDM miniatures that were printed at 0 0.08 millimeter layer height with that four millimeter nozzle. These look pretty good. I did a horrible job removing the supports, ended up breaking off some of the parts here. For the, it, again, you're gonna have a hard time getting some of those supports off of these really detailed prints, but the quality is fairly good even with that standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now, if you wanted to kick things up a slight notch higher, what you can do is very easily swap out the nozzle on your 3D printer. Now, in general, a lot of these are gonna have some sort of casing that's gonna house your extruder and you can remove the bolts on either side of that. You're gonna heat up your nozzle to about 80 degrees. Then you can use a socket wrench or a wrench to actually remove the existing nozzle that's on there. Make sure that the filament is already out of your 3D printer before starting this process here. You definitely don't wanna gunk up the inside of your extruder. But with that nozzle now removed, you can replace it with a 
two millimeter nozzle, which is gonna be a even finer degree. This is gonna be the same process if you wanted to go up as well to a 0.6 or a 0.8 or even larger than that. This is also a great time to take a look at your silicone sock on your 3D printer. Sometimes those need to be swapped out. You can order those over on Amazon. They're pretty easily ordered in bulk and then you can swap those on and off as needed. That's typically something you wanna make sure that you have on there after you've replaced your nozzle. I should also mention that on the Neptune 3 Pro, this is a direct drive extruder machine. So I'm not gonna have that PTFE tube that you typically see running down into the extruder of your 3D printer that you might find on something like the Neptune 2S or a bunch of the other 3D printers that are out there. That might slightly differ with how you install those nozzles and then reset that tube back in so it's flushly setting against the nozzle that you've installed. Now with that 0.2 millimeter nozzle installed, I went back into Prusa Slicer and adjusted some of my settings ever so slightly to account for the fact that I have that 0.2 millimeter nozzle in place and then went off and reprinted these miniatures all over again. Now this 32 millimeter scale miniature only took two hours and 35 minutes to print, which is only five minutes longer than the original one that we printed. I don't quite know how that worked out or how that happened with some of the settings that I tweaked over in Prusa Slicer, but it printed and this looks really dang clean and I'm excited to get those supports off. And then when it came to the 75 millimeter scale statue, I was able to print that in 12 hours and 40 minutes. That's somehow 30 minutes faster than what we originally able to print it on the four millimeter nozzle. I honestly have no idea how that happened. I'm sure I must have tweaked something in my settings over in Prusa Slicer to make that happen. But again, the print quality looks fantastic here. I just need to get those supports off so that we can do this comparison between the finely detailed ones here and our resin 3D prints. And while I'm removing those supports, I want to say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Elegoo Mars 3, which just so happens to be my favorite resin 3D printer. It's the one that I use almost all of the time basically has the perfect build volume for me when it comes to printing statues and small figurines and things like that in fine, fine detail over on the Mars 3. Then we also have the Elegoo Mars 3 Pro, which is just an amazing FDM direct drive 3D printer. If you're interested in learning more about these machines or picking up one for yourself, you can find links to those down below. And now that we finally got all those supports removed, let's start comparing some of these prints. And first up is the 0.4 millimeter nozzle versus the 0.2 millimeter nozzle. And at this 0.08 millimeter layer height, the 0.2 definitely looks a good bit cleaner at this 32 millimeter scale. Now what's crazy to me is if I compare the 0.2 millimeter nozzle to our resin 3D print. I think at a quick glance, if someone just handed both of these to me, I might've thought that this was a resin 3D print just because of the amount of detail that I'm able to see on it, again, just with my naked eye. But as soon as you start touching it and feeling it, you're gonna be able to definitely tell how smooth this is compared to our FDM print option. The resin is gonna win in every one of these cases, but it's still amazing to see what you can get off of these FDM 3D printers. Now at this 75 millimeter scale, this is where I think things get really interesting because it's still smooth small and it's still highly detailed, but it's not like a huge prop or anything like that. But look at all those fine details on the robe and the belt little rope thing that's there, where you can definitely see some of the differences in quality is when you start looking at the face and the hair. Obviously that resin is gonna be a lot crisper looking than what we can get on the FDM side of things. Now this was the first time that I've actually printed with that 0.2 millimeter nozzle before, and I'm honestly impressed with the quality of prints that you're able to get out of this compared to, again, your resin 3D printers. And hopefully this video was helpful for some of you out there that maybe have an FDM 3D printer and have always been printing with that 0.4 millimeter nozzle and should consider downgrading it. Is that a downgrade or is that technically an upgrade to a 0.2 nozzle and printing off some really finely detailed things. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I'm making videos here and content on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings or my FDM 3D printer settings, you can find those in my Patreon. And let me know if you have any other tips or suggestions on printing some of these finely detailed things like miniatures over on your FDM 3D printers. I just want to say thanks again for watching it all and I'll see you next time.